Welcome to the Alyosha Society, where we are pursuing truth, beauty, and goodness through great literature. And the Alyosha Society now presents Five in Five, where you can get the who, what, when, where, and most importantly, the why on works of great literature, presumably in about, give or take, five minutes. In this video, we're going to be answering the question, why read East of Eden? Let's get right to it. Background and summary. <clears throat> you have to pay attention. When an extraordinarily gifted writer says of his own work, and I quote, it's my best work, the culmination of all my talents brought to bear in this one novel. Everything I've written up to this point was in preparation for this work. John Steinbeck said all of these things about East of Eden. Steinbeck chose one of the oldest stories known to man as the basis for this novel, the story of Cain and Abel. Don't worry, no spoilers. And honestly, it's based only loosely on the biblical tale of sibling rivalry. Let's get a brief bio here for context. Steinbeck was born in 1902, Central California, the area known as the Salinas Valley. More on the importance of Salinas Valley later. Steinbeck wrote 16 novels. He wrote a few novellas and a bunch of short stories. He studied literature at Stanford, did not graduate, continued to write, traveled to New York for a brief period of time, couldn't get his work published, returned back to California, 1962, important year for Steinbeck. When he was 60 years old, he won the Nobel Prize in Literature. He was also given the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Johnson, 1964. He died four years later, 1968, in New York. And Steinbeck is still considered one of the giants of American literature. Now, East of Eden falls right in the middle of this list of publications, published in 1952. And as far as his other works are concerned, well, you may have heard of some of them. Grapes of Wrath, Cannery Row, The Pearl of Mice and Men, quite a lineup. Let's get right to the whys then. Why read East of Eden? Number one, Salinas Valley. You know, a good writer causes you to want to go to the area they describe. Ever since I read Steinbeck, I have wanted to go to the Salinas Valley in California. His descriptions of that beautiful countryside are alluring. Provincialism is the idea that my geographic location is all I care about. It's all that matters. And I'm convinced that we need gifted writers to take us out of our comfort zone and inspire a longing for other places. Salinas Valley. Number two, depiction of evil. I like books that elicit discussion. Now, the book doesn't need to be the end all on a given topic. I don't need to agree with what it says. Just skillfully raise issues for fruitful discussion. That's what I like. Critics argue that Steinbeck goes overboard in his depiction of evil in this novel. Maybe he does. I want to be careful. I'm not going to spoil any plots here, so I'm going to refrain from mentioning names here. That's fine. Maybe he does go overboard. In any event, his development of the evil character in this story is a fantastic discussion starter. Number three, the father-son dynamic. There are several examples of the father and son relationships in East of Eden. They're not always biological, mind you. Cyrus Trask and his two sons. Then you have the next generation, Adam Trask and his two sons. You have a character named Samuel Hamilton. He has sons, but he's also like a father to other characters in the story. I got to tell you, as, as a father of four sons, I'm a fan of any story that makes me think more deeply about the crucial connection between a dad and his boys. Number four, sibling rivalry. Along the same lines, 
Lives are shaped and altered by this key relationship, brothers and sisters. It raises issues of love and companionship, anger, jealousy. It brings up the issue of forgiveness and the necessity of maintaining the most important of all relationships, those family connections. Number five, Tim Shell. What? Tim Shell. It's a Hebrew word. Well, it's supposed to be. There's some debate about whether or not Steinbeck got the spelling right or wrong. Anyway, it's supposed to carry the meaning of free will. You know, the argument that we decide our own fate. We choose good or evil. And I mentioned this one in my five in five video on the Aeneid. So be sure you check that one out. But it's one of those perennial questions. You know, it's never going away and it's always fun to discuss. So there you have it. Five reasons why you should read East of Eden by John Steinbeck. Got any questions, comments about my list? Email me, bruce at aliociasociety.com.